Police closed off the sidewalk in front of the house as they began their probe. Homicide inspectors, members of the CSI unit, and FBI agents went in and out of the house all day. Two sources with knowledge of the investigation told ABC7 News they believe a resident who used to live in the lower flat of the house may have been responsible for the abduction of Kevin Collins. The 10-year-old boy disappeared almost three decades ago from this neighborhood. He left basketball practice at St. Agnes School and waited for a bus down the street at Oak and Masonic. The house which police searched today is across from the church school. After Kevin vanished, a nationwide search ensued. His picture was placed on milk cartons, one of the first missing children to be publicized that way. Posters went up. Volunteers scoured the city. Thousands of tips poured into police, but nothing materialized. Decades went by until a new cold case unit began reviewing the case again. The evidence led them to the resident of this house, a person of interest who was interviewed during the initial investigation. Police searched his home at that time but found nothing. The cold case unit wanted a more thorough search. This afternoon, a cadaver sniffing dog found something in the basement floor. City crews brought in a jackhammer and began digging through a portion of the concrete. A crew from the medical examiner's office was called in when bones were discovered in the ground. Our sources say a man named Named Kelly lived in the house at the time, but that he has since died. Michael Scharf has lived next door for four decades. He knew Kelly and his roommate. Never thought of, but they would do something like this. Never. They never. They never showed it. They were calm. They were cool and everything. No trouble. No trouble. None.